Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to start working with Chaotica application. Chaotica is a fractal generating applications that can work very easy for the beginners or very advanced. And it's actually have multiple layers of deep inside. So if you're interested, you can look on my previous video where I review this software. But then this will kind of start working on this. We're not necessarily going in a too much depth, but we do look on a little bit under hood how it does work. So let's go right here, beginning, and you can begin by going to howticafractal.com and you can three ways you can get this application. You can download it free trial, you can download it beta version, or you can go ahead and purchase if you find. Notice right here, this is time sensitive kind of sales Black Friday but you can get it for quite a bit discount if you want a HD or a studio. Notice the other applications, they kind of have limitations on the resolutions and other elements. And if you're interested, read more about this, I recommend for you to go to community forum. This is very active application, so it's live application. It's meaning the creative team or developers still actively develop the application, fixing, or preparing new uh, releases. As well on the forum, you have a small but very active group that if you have questions, they'll be happy to answer to you. They also have a basic manual that just going overview interface and not so much in details how the iterators or other things working. Um, also, you can look on a gallery if you want to inspire by the art of other digital artists. Notice they also have it animation. So in Chaotica, you can create animations. But this is very fast overview. So right now, let's jump in our application. And when you begin, you probably will have a screen like this, which is have it um, random worlds. And uh, I will recommend you to begin with these worlds. You probably by beginning have it nine worlds first. And this is specified in our random world generator. So let's go back. We'll set nine here. We'll go file, new random world. So this is probably how you will see. And if you're interested, you can start by accessing these elements. If you don't find anything useful, you can always create new in a random world generator. But before we jump there, let's overview what we have in our applications. You'll notice on the top, we have it very um, common elements like file, where you can create new empty world, which I would recommend for more advanced users to use it. Random world, where we can use a different element, browsed examples, and those examples all preset, but they're representing a very nice collection, uh, collection of different fractals they can based on. We also have our open world that you saved before, save world, image, and reason world if you work on any of them. We also have a simple edit, undo, redo, some XML, which has got parameters for ours. Um, render. One thing you notice right here, it says pause, resume, render. If you notice, I still rendering, and this is very interesting about um, Chaotica. It will continue render new iterations, so it's creating better and better resolution. Of course, to some point, you need to come to the kind of stop on this. But overall, if you want pause, you can go and pause resume. You also can option update your image. Um, we can save, save um, settings. Our tools will look after. This is more important when we're going in Windows because we have the world editor, palette, animation. So we'll look on those just a little bit after we continue, mostly as a reference. They are more in advanced way to create it. And of course, in our help, we have a tutorials, forum license, and so on information. Okay, below you'll notice we have our worlds that we're currently working on. Our render settings, we have our resolution, how much in depth iterations we want to go, quality, um, we want to render there. Below we have the random world generator, it's what we're going to use a little bit in the future. And below we have our settings for the video card. Notice I'm using the GeForce RTX 2070 and we're using OpenCLs enable. A double precision you can enable, but it is will slow down quite a bit. On our right side, 
we have it our post processing where we can adjust colors gammas and so on included curves per each channel if we need it and of course our middle is our work area anytime when you open any of the windows they will pop up windows and if you have a multi monitor setup you can always drag them on different screen and just leave it there it's kind of get used uh, useful because you always access those parameters without just clicking up open them so let's create first world and we're going to file new random worlds and right here you can preview some of them so if you don't find any useful let's click new random so it will regenerate it and it's creating randomly those iterations before we do this i want to look on some parameters so currently i have it a nine if i need it i can select even um, 12. so next time with a render you can notice now it's rendering 12 different words so you can set by the size of the screen i think nine is will be good because that way I don't need scroll and I can preview any one that I will prefer to look. Also, we have minimum iterations and maximum. So it's how many erasures or complexity. So we can always go just example to two and we can see how the simplicity. If you when you're going to look how the iteration work and interaction, I would recommend for you to use it as small as rare you can. So in this case, it's always one, uh, it's two, I think, because we can put it one, but it's always switched to two. So two is minimum, and you can see how they work and interact between each other. So for now, as we playing around and creating, we'll just go ahead and select five and seven. So we'll go a little bit more. And now we can create a very complex, we can see very interesting elements. So let's go, go through all few more times till maybe something pop up and we like it you know maybe this is actually a little bit too much so let's go just reduce limit on complexity and for example we have it let's select this one let's look very interesting so all what you need just click select and now you can see it is preloaded so this is our iterations next below we can also work with some parameters of this so currently we have a 12 color nodes we can switch those color it's how many will allow uh, create so for example if we just set two of them and click on a palette you can see this is our current and this is what's suggested with two palettes so maybe it's not enough for us so let's go with the maybe five palettes we'll click on and now we'll have a little bit more colors introducing to us uh, let's color not 12 so we'll have a little bit more so this way we can go and preview you can select what colors you want again you can increase by number maybe even put it 25 so now you have way more colors you can choose from again that is selecting randomly creating for us okay next beside the palette we have a transforms and transforms will look a little bit in the future it's allowed to in a way they interact between each other and this is will have more effect on a structure so you can see we can look between um different ones which one would like it and you know what this one look kind of interesting to me so all what i need to do just click on the select and now i have this different well again maybe this transforms does not look good so i'll go back to nine just for now let's click again on transforms actually it's right here nine should be here and 12 here sorry there you go so and you can see it's selecting different transforms so i can find well this one look more interesting so i want to take this as a base now i want to again look on transforms maybe going from this point and you can see we have other ones even more interesting so like this maybe with color there you go so you can apply more with this shaders will help us to create with the coloring and you can notice beside the palette the switching shaders will have a little bit more dramatic effect on us so again if i don't like it i can click again and cycle through all different random shaders okay let's go look on the selectors so 
random selectors allowed us to modify additional presets and you can see on a tonal little bit adjustments it won't be that dramatic but again it is help us to kind of more tweaking and just playing with those elements allowed you to create some interesting effect so let's look under hood how it actually does work and for this we'll need to go to windows and we'll need to go open world editor notice right here in world editor we set from five from three to five iterators and we actually have it five iterators i think one two three four five we got five iterators and their settings adjustment so all of this position is random what does it set here notice when before we put playing with kind of shaders here is our adjustment of shaders like hitting so we adjusting all of these different properties inside i don't necessarily want to go very deep in this because it is more advanced to look but it is look under hood how it's selecting so for example some of the shapes and colors they are going with our transforms if we're going in a transforms and we look you can notice we have a total different transform so if we select one of them you can see it start affecting shapes so in some cases all these different transforms that we're creating it was randomly selecting some of those elements and if you want go and adjust one of this manually you can always open go to one you can select from the list if you know a name or you always can click on browse and right here you can see we have all these different different type shaders so we can select one and you can see now it's look total different so let's go browse again select one so you can always um have the ability to kind of modify and play around with them this ones look very interesting because it's give it kind of almost like blur on the end give it some 3d dimensional but again this is it's how we can apply two um, singles. What I was meaning, we can apply this to um, just one specific. So let's go ahead right here, explore example. You can select different from list. You can see how it's all affecting. Okay, let's go to actually preview browse. So it's visually view for us. We can apply exactly the same. In this case, I kind of like because it's created all this almost with blur depth kind of creating for us view again when you finish play with one and if you want to play more you can always click on transform which will bring you another of those effects that can overlay even create somewhat with the star look kind of very interesting i think so you can preview remember if you preview on a big and you don't like it you can go back to your original or just click over and see which one maybe come up So this is kind of overview um, on a coloring, because remember when we set our palette and everything, we go to Windows Palette Editor. And in Palette Editor, you can see it's add more complex. We can modify hue or color. So for example, we can go all the way and you can see on the bottom how we change coloring just for this specific. Saturation, how it is um, more saturated colors it is. And of course, lightness. Notice right here, it's going to, all the way to the black. If we don't need black, we can bring up, which is kind of bring a little bit more on the lightness. Okay, we can go bring this one. Maybe adjust here. Then bring brightness in our. So we can adjust and work just with a specific one color if we need it. But again, this is more as a tweaking and you can play with this. Don't worry if you mess up, you can always come back and just try to play maybe even more with all these different palettes, with a um, different coloring and different effect. Again, let's look a little bit on the end, close to our post-processing. And this is just affecting not the structure of the image, it's just final representation. So right here, you can, we can modify, of course, our brightness gamma we can adjust our vibrance increase on the coloring so for this one okay let's go back to one and of course with a curve if you know what you're going after so we can modify 
some of the coloring. For example, we'll set a little bit more cyanish, reddish look, kind of. So you can work a little bit with adjusting tone and theme. But again, this is does not necessarily affecting image. This is just only affecting final output, not the structure or all of this image. When you're done, um, you can always wait till it's rendered. And remember what it says, it will continue rendering. But when you find the quality of the image is successful, you, um, acceptable, you can go right here and click on save image. You also can save your world when you work, it's meaning whatever you work right now and you want to come back or share with other people, you can go always click on the save world, which is save all these current settings. And of course, we can go ahead and click on save image. So in this case, we'll save it this precise image you see on a screen as a render. And your image will save as PNG format, which is not compressed. It will be a little bit large size, but again, it is preserve all nice quality. So this is kind of overview where the introduction starting with the Chaotica. I will encourage you to go play a little bit more around with this, see what you think, if you like it or not. And if you want to see more tutorials and more in the depth how the Chaotica work, please subscribe to my channel. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and I will really appreciate all your support. Thank you.